Hi, this is Glam Fairy and I am with Lovely Lady and for today we're going to be removing gel polish. Now, as you can see, I've already made a start on this gel polish removal. We're using a 180 to 100 grit boomerang file. Um, just a boomerang file available for many beauty wholesalers. So, we're going to start by using the 180 side, starting at the base of the gel and gently working from side to side because the last thing that we want to do is to create any sort of heat build up on the nail bed so if you just do it from side to side you will create a little bit of heat there which will cause a little bit of pain for your client so that is the last thing that we want to do so gently go over the nail working from side to side when it comes to doing your side walls go down then do your other side because the last thing you want to do is just keep that file in the one place so we've completely removed that shine now so now we're going to uh, use our acetone so I will see you in a couple of moments hi so we've finished the filing we've done all ten nails so now what I'm going to do we've got acetone soaked swab here it's a non-linting swab from salon services so we just saturate that with acetone tap that down nicely always use your foil shiny side in because that will keep the heat in place your foil over the top fold it under make a nice little sausage roll and bend it under so you get a nice little package there don't squeeze the end if you squeeze the end you'll be pushing acetone down your client's finger so it's always good just to fold it over leave it still quite loose but make sure you've got plenty of acetone soaked on that swab right so just to cut some of the time down I'm now going to apply the acetone soaked swabs to all ten fingers and I will meet you back in a few minutes okay we've now applied to all 10 fingers and they are going to soak for 10 to 15 minutes and then we will use our gel remover tool to remove the gel so I will see you in 10 minutes now we've had this nail in soak for 10 minutes so we're going to have a quick look undo your foil package quite neatly because in that instance you will be able to put this foil package back on without wasting product so, you get your little scraper tool, gently scrape at the polish, making sure not to, to making sure not to scrape the natural nail bed. How quickly this comes off can depend on room temperature, whether you've actually heated the acetone up with some sort of device like heated mittens or a nail dryer, um, or just basically putting your client's hand in a, hand in a bag of a uh, sandwich bag and putting it in some hot water. So as you can see, this nail isn't quite ready to have all the acetone off. So we're going to put some more acetone on the swab, replace it like so and then put the foil back over the top right so as again don't squeeze because that like I say earlier that will put ashtone up your client's fingernail so let's have a look at the next one all right so again we're just going to get our scraping tool sounded a bit worse then didn't I we're going to get our scraping tool And have a good scrape. What sort of nail colour do you want to have on? I don't mind. You don't mind? Sorry, you can speak up. <laughs> the lovely lady is shy. Mm -hmm. It's only going on YouTube, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> You can be a star in Wixton. The lovely lady. 
and her YouTube debut. Mm. Right, putting another swab back on this one, not quite ready. Oh, butterfingers. Right, so let's get some of that folding action going again. Fold up, but don't squeeze. There we go. I think we've got the idea now of what we're doing with the removal of the gel polish. So I will see you in a few minutes when we've removed all 10 fingers and then we'll go on to the next stage of applying uh, or preparation of the natural nail. Okay. Okay, we've now removed the gel from all 10 fingers. As you can see, we've got a little bit of whitening around here from the acetone where it's been on the skin. We've avoided getting it on the skin as much as possible. Um, the nails look a little bit cloudy. This is down to the fact that you have just put an acetone on them when you've been scraping gel polish off. Now, you can use the other, head, the other end of the gel polish uh, removing tool. And the way that you would use that is to go down the nail. Or you can use an orange wood stick. Some people like to use those because they're a little bit kinder on the nail. Depending as to the gel brand you use, we use Signature Gel Brand by ASP, which basically means that you need everything, including a sledgehammer, to get it off. So this is why we use the sharper end of the tool. Still not causing too much damage to the natural nail plate. Now what we're going to do, we're now going to do our cuticle work, and this includes putting a cuticle cream on, pushing the cuticle back, um, which looks something like the cuticle remover tool. Um, so then we'll be buffing the natural nail plate, we'll be dehydrating the nail, then we'll be applying a bonder. So I'm going to get all of that ready. So I will see you in a couple of moments. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to apply the cuticle remover. Not too much because you don't want to make the nail too wet if you're going to be doing a gel polish or shellac service. Shellac always, I think the shellac recommends using their own cuticle remover, which is cuticle away, I think it's called. So gently push the cuticle remover into the cuticles with a brush. When it comes to doing the thumb, you don't need to put extra cuticle remover on there because you've already got some in your brush. I always use a brush to put my cuticle remover on because I find out it just scrubs it into the nail plate just a little bit more. I only put it around the cuticle area, I don't put it on the whole nail because you will make the nail too damp and if the nail's too damp it means that your gel polish won't stick to it properly, it won't adhere. So we go back to the nail that we first applied the cuticle remover to. Always use your couch roll and this is the same couch roll that we use to collect all the pieces from the gel removal. All you do is then fold it into two again. It cut down the cost, it's healthier for the environment. Okay, so we just push back with our cuticle tool. Let me see that so that people can see it. There we go. Don't press on too hard, because if you press on too hard, you will remove excess layers of nail, which should still be on there. Remove the excess cuticle with the knife at the end of the cuticle pusher or the curette, whichever you may be using. Oh, sounds like the natives are restless. Okay. So the advantages of using a gel polish over a normal polish is you should get two to three weeks of chip resistant colour. It is harder to remove but that is a service that people can charge for. Um, personally I don't charge removal if I'm going to be putting another polish over the top. So if I'm doing two gel services um, people always get the removal of the old gel colour included in the price of the new gel colour. The only time we charge for gel removal is if it's a, a one-time treat for a wedding and somebody wants to then have it removed at a later stage. It's just basically you're using your time to remove that gel 
So why not charge for it because that is part of your time. And a lovely lady does have extremely large cuticles. So some people do, some people don't. Some people love having no cuticle. Personally, I'm not bothered. Not bothered about life in general. Even smiling makes my face ache. Oh, I bet you can't wait till I do the makeup tutorials. <laughs> you so know you're going to like Dick Henry. <laughs> you don't know who Dick Henry is, do you? No. No, I didn't think you did. That's me showing me age. Right, now I'm going to carry on with this. Um, I'm not going to film the rest of this because this bit's going to be boring. So I will meet you in a few minutes when we've removed the cuticle on all ten fingers. Okay, now we've still got a little bit of cuticle remover left on this hand. So what we're going to do to deactivate the cuticle remover, dip your brush into the water, not the hand. Put this, let's just move that a bit closer so that everyone can see. So. Again, saturating the nails at this point wouldn't be a good idea. Even if you're doing a normal polish, you don't want to get the nails too wet. So if you don't deactivate your cuticle remover or rinse it off, that's left on there. Not only does it aggravate the cuticle, but it will also act as a barrier towards any gel polish, bonder, base coat that you're going to be popping on. Okay, now we've let the nails dry for approximately five minutes so that we don't get any moisture retained in the nail when we do our gel service or our normal uh, polish service. So what we're going to do now is there is a slight bit of damage on the nail from old acrylics that have been applied. So we're just going to buff lightly because with most gel polish services you need to take the shine off the nail. In this case we're just removing any residues of what might be on there. So as you notice I'm going with the grain of the nail. Going with the grain of the nail actually preserves the condition of the nail. And that is all you need to do regarding regarding the removal of the shine. So uh, what I will tell you is that we filed the nails, shaped the nails before we took the gel polish off. The only reason that we did this is because I don't particularly like filing nails that have had acetone on because I find that once you've been soaking the acetone, nailing acetone for about 10 minutes, it makes the nail very, very soft and what you don't want to be doing is filing and shaping because you will actually fan the nail out and the nail seems to split. Also, even if you're filing a nail with gel polish on, unless it's a nail enhancement, or unless you've got an acrylic or a hard gel, if you go backwards and forth with your nail file, you will still create heat buildup and that will still damage the nail. So even with the gel polish on, you still do the one direction, just one direction. Focusing on that a bit better. There we go. God, I'm good. A little bit of gel left on that one. As my dad would say, never mind. You say that quite a lot, don't you? Never mind. Ah, <laughs> ah. Let's have a little bit of light. Ha ah, ha, light sesame. I wonder why they say open sesame. I'm sure 
come up with something to do with genies and lamps. Your nails need some condition, girl. Let's have a close-up of that. There you go. One nail prepped. Now, I have been using non-linting wipes, but as the camera can pick up, or should better pick up, look what we have here. We have a fizzy, which I think is Lester slang for, oh dear, there's a piece of fluff stuck to it. Oh, there we go. Not to be a hypocrite, and I've just filed, but you know, life's short. Okay, last cab on the rank. Let's get a close up. No, let's not. Let's do it. Ah, that's better. Uh, I do apologise for anyone watching this that likes to watch it in hyper colour. But I might have to change the colour setting on it in the moment. Please bear in mind that this is one of my first videos. So if you're going to put any comments, constructive criticism is welcome, nasty comments, not so. But I will take anything on the chin. If you like the video, subscribe or click like. If you don't like the video, then don't like it. <laughs> right, so I'm now going to proceed on to the other hand. So nobody needs to see that, so I will catch up with you in a few seconds. Okay, we've now buffed all 10 nails. Now we're going in with our sterilizer stroke dehydrating spray. This just dehydrates the nail and removes any of those bits that have come off from your little white block or whatever it is that you've got that you're using or whether it's a file. You always get like the powder. You can just use a nail brush but you dehydrate it just gives it a little bit more cleaning. So as you can see, that will start to go a little bit dull in a second. A bit too close, then there we go. Okay, so just to cut a long story short, what we're actually using, we're actually using a sanitizer spray, which is 99% isopropyl alcohol. That is what most dehydrators are made out of. So if you have a quart short of dehydrator, you can use sanitizer spray. Um, with ASP they actually recommend using their sanitizer spray so we're not doing anything that we shouldn't be doing. Alright, so let's have the other hand. So this hand was done first, so what we're going to do we're going to apply our dehydrator. Now I don't know if you can see this on the camera that is literally soaking straight in. Let's switch that light off. There we go, oh, that's better. Right. So. That is going straight in. Do the other hand. Thank you. Cool. 
Okay, let's have both hands done. There we go. Right, so we're just going to wait a couple of seconds for those to soak in. And now we're going to go in with the bonder. But what I'm going to do for the bonder is I'm only going to apply it to the lower portion of the free edge. If you're going to get a lifting on gel polish, it will be the free edge that you that you get it on. And I always like to pop a little bit on that free edge. Cup the free edge, they say. Cup, cup the free edge. A word so good I've just had to use it twice. This is where I get to the end and I realise I've not pressed the record mm. button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also really quite bad at laughing, aren't I? Right, last lap. Right, I think we're too far away. Let's get a little bit closer. That's better, look, there we go. Now, for those people wanting a video recorder, oh, sorry, a camcorder, the high def ones are definitely one to go for. With this bonder, it doesn't soak all the way in, which I find quite bizarre. Usually, bonders disappear completely, but this one stays a little bit shiny looking. Going in at a funny angle because I don't want to knock the camera flying, but there we go. Jobs are good in. Okay, we've now prepped and bonded all of the natural nails. So now we're going to apply the base coat. The base coat is what makes the gel polish easier to come off the nail and it also stops the gel polish from moving around too much whilst it's on the nail plate. So we're just going to apply the polish Avoiding the cuticle area, avoiding the side walls, and we're going to cut that free edge. The less gel base you put on, the better the adhesion will be of your gel polish. Literally, you just want to wipe the product on. You don't want it to look too shiny, but you don't want it to look too dull either, otherwise it won't stick. Right, so we're going to use the freeze method. So we're just going to pop that finger under the lamp, pop the whole hand in, and we're now do the other finger. So here we go. Wipe off of as much excess of the gel as you can. Okay, and then we're going to swap hands. Usually you find it better to use the over the lamp method, which is where you work with the client over the lamp. But for filming purposes, that's not convenient. So again, just applying. So we're now going to carry on doing all 10 nails and then we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Right, all 10 fingers have now been based and I've been setting the UV lamp. 
So we're now going to start by applying our colour layer. So this is the first colour layer. Which looks absolutely brilliant. Now, the full colour won't be achieved on the first colour layer. You will need to put a couple of colour layers on before you achieve full colour. Okay. So again, using the freeze method, now the freeze method is where you paint one nail, pop it under the lamp, then paint your next nail. So, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but it's a lovely magenta purple colour. Velvet Plum by Signature. Absolutely delicious. Delicious. Cup the free edge. Cupping the free edge just gives it a little bit more chip resistancy. I always cup the free edge first. And then pull the brush down so that it avoids getting a great big bulbous bit on the end of the nail there. Okay, for light as well. So we'll carry on doing this and then we'll meet you back for the second coat. Okay, we've now applied the first coat of colour and we're now going to apply the second coat of colour. So, sorry guys if uh, the last video wasn't too uh, close up, but this will give you a better look at how we apply it. So we apply it to the free edge first, and then draw down the length of the nail towards the free edge. And there we have one gel polished nail. Okay, part swap. So if we just get that back in shot for you. So if we'll just go over that one more time. We should be pleased to hear because I do like to waffle. So just apply it to the tip. And the camera likes to go in and out of focus like it's on a trampoline. So you, the, I can't honestly describe the quality of the HD of this camera because you can even see every little imperfection on this nail whether that's a good thing or a bad thing I don't know for a tutorial but there we go but yeah this is one hot colour now they do say that several thin layers are better than one a certain company always says thin to win so we'll stick with that so I'm now going to carry on with the other eight nails and we'll see you back we've now completed coat number two of the colour and we're going to go straight in with our top gloss coat. This needs to be used very, very, very sparingly. It's quite runny. So again, we're going to be using the freezing method. So we just draw that down as if we're using a normal polish. Don't forget to cap the edge. and then pull out to avoid that lump. Okay. So for those of you that have seen this method being used before, this is my preferred method of applying the top coat. So just to go through the timings with you here, the ASP signature range takes two minutes under a UV lamp and 30 seconds in an LED lamp. Okay. So again, we're being quite sparing. I always like to just wipe the brush on top of the nails first, just to remove the excess. And then you can just move it and spread it around with your brush.
The only problem we do find with top coat is that it is quite easy to contaminate. So if you've got any slight bit of dust on your brush, it will go back into your bottle and it will contaminate the whole tub. So my advice is periodically just use a piece of towel roll which is definitely lint free. More lint free than your lint free wipes apparently. Okay. Before you go putting it back in your bottle. Which one are we on now? Thank you lovely lady for reminding me mm. which finger I've got. I like lovely lady, I think it's nice. I think it sort of says what it does on the tin. It's a lovely lady with the lovely nails. Do you see something a little bit more German? Mm. Back, 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 back. There we are. Now would so not be a good time to switch that lamp on. Glare! Okay. Hey, we're disappearing. There we go. I think I need a new one of these. Yeah, top coat. Mm. I just like moving it around. There we go. Right then, so which one are we on? Yeah, we're on this one here. Let's get a little bit closer. There we go. Ooh. Pinky. Look at that. You can't get much more close up than that. A bit too close, a bit too close, a bit too close. A bit too close, there we go. Thumbnail. I bet you're thinking, stop moving my hand around. <laughs> Although this is supposed to be a tutorial, I do like to talk to my clients. Because people don't just come to me for the fact that I know how to paint a nail. They come for the the wit and debonair, <laughs> what I would like to think. Right, we're going to leave that for two minutes under the gel, under the UV lamp, before we apply the gel to the thumbnail. Right, so for this last nail, we're going to wait for that whole hand to cure for two minutes before we put the top coat on this one because while that hand is setting, the top coat on this one will be sliding around and you will end up with pooling at the sides of the nail here. So what we'll do is we'll finish the top coat and then we'll show you a picture at the end of what they look like. Okay, we've now completed the gel polish. So what we're going to do is we've just popped on our wipe off stroke sanitizer spray stroke 99% isopropyl alcohol. So we're just going to wipe off that dispersion layer or sweating layer as some people like to call it. You will notice that on wiping the dispersion layer you may get a little bit 
of colour on there and that is purely because the dispersion layer does contain pigment. It's not to say that your gel hasn't cured properly, it just means that the dispersion layer, especially with darker colours, will contain some of that, that pigment. So, and there we go. And that is the finished product. Now, what we would normally do is put some cuticle oil around the edges there just to make the, sh the nails look very shiny, condition the cuticles and just finish the process off. But because we're going to be doing some nail art, we're going to leave it as it is and that will be my next video. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone for watching. So like, dislike or subscribe. Thanks guys.